There have always been stories about hyperspace, which space, the veteran pilots call it, when they've had a few too many in some backwater dive. For the most part, the stories come from the early days of the hyperdrive, ships that came out of their destination as scrap or vapor or just didn't. Outside the Federation Science Facility on Earth, there sits a pillar, carved of bell steel and engraved with 23 names, the pilots who died for humanity's gain. A hundred years later, however, the rumors persist. Ships are still lost in hyperspace, but always to some definable error, jumping with too little fuel or with a faulty nav computer. Hyperspace is safer than it has ever been, and thousands of jumps are made a day, a second even, without incident. And yet, and yet, still you hear the stories. Those same dive bars where the grizzled veterans play home to strange tales. When the night draws in and the drink runs low, they dug their heads and drop their voices. I've seen things out there, they say. Heard things. Things they can't explain. The tales are as varied as the pilots themselves. Strange voices, creatures glimpsed out the corner of the eye, fleeting sensor readings that nothing can quite explain. Hell, I once heard someone swear that something had hit the ship. Big and leather, he said, like a giant bat. Made the biggest thump you ever heard, then I was gone. He thought it was nothing. He'd had a few drinks, maybe. There might have been a lingering odor of onion head in the cockpit, possibly. But when he landed, there was the faintest hint of a smear on the outside of the cockpit, right where he had seen it hit. Might have been a trick of the light, or some leak from inside the station. Might not. Me? I've never taken it seriously. Sure, there were strange noises in Hyper. That was to be expected. Everyone I knew had heard something that sounded almost human, or seen a particularly odd shape in a twisting, writhing tunnel. Surely, any sightings were just sleep deprivation, or a good old-fashioned hallucination. Nothing I had seen had ever quite convinced me otherwise. Hell, I was smart. I wasn't going to read anything into some weird noises. Leave that to the tinfoil hatters. It all changed two years ago. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary for me that run. I've been trading deep in the Empire space between LTO and Wuru, going one way, resonating separators the other. Nothing exciting, nothing glamorous, but it paid the bills. Had my heart set on an asp. Was going to go when I joined out of explored space, see the galaxy. Must have been the hundredth time I left Wuru, and I had it down so well it was almost automatic. Set destination, chart drive, jump, throttle back from the star, land at clouds. Normally I listened to music when I jumped, read a book or something. This time was different. Something had me looking out the windows. Was it some quirk of fate that put me in the right place at the right time? Or was it that I saw this time what I had missed the others? The first indication of something different was the voice. At first, I dismissed it, just my brain trying to make sense of random noise, I told myself. But without music to cover it or distort it, it got louder. Mummy. Unmistakably that, a small girl's voice whispering. Mummy. 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 My skin started crawling. I couldn't help it, couldn't rationalize what I was hearing. I started scanning the cockpit, looking for any indication of where the voice came from. It was watching me from my right. I hadn't even seen it approach, but it was hanging there, clinging to my hole and staring through the glass. Seconds passed as I stared at it, my mind reeling. Otherworldly life, something heard of only in rumors. Not the life of stories either, no mythical Thargoid this, no insectile monster. It looked like a dark, amorphous bowl, strange tentacles snaking away from it. In the center, almost scratching against the cockpit, sat a beak, serrated and jacked. As I watched it, it moved again. Mommy. I stared, not daring to move. Strange shapes moved on its surface near the beak, and I got the feeling that it was watching me somehow. Around us, the tunnel of which space stretched out, the familiar screeching and wailing accompanied by this new, insane voice. Mummy. The jump dragged on. I had had long jumps before, but this one seemed endless. Maybe it was the shock, maybe it was something else. Was this thing in front of me, anything seemed possible. I sat there, breathing hard, and the dry, recycled shipboard air scratched away in my lungs. I couldn't help it. I coughed. Even as I started, the creature moved. It lunged forward, and the beak smashed against the glass. A deep scratch appeared in front of it, and its jaw started working, chewing away at the cockpit. Even as I watched, great gouges opened, carved deep with a horrifying speed. And then, even as it seemed poised to break straight through to attack me personally, I finally dropped from witch space, and it disappeared. One second it was there, the next, it was just me and my ship, accelerating towards the sun. Even now, I don't remember the rest of the journey. Everything else went blank, until I stood there, 
looking at the outside of my cockpit, looking at the canyons carved into the reinforced glass and the strange pearlescent sheen where the creature had attached itself, hearing its strange ethereal voice echoing in my ears. Mummy. I retired from spacebound life after that, took a journey in a passenger liner, safety in numbers, back home, and haven't been on a ship since. That whole journey, I stayed in my room and covered every time we jumped, every time I heard the wailing of witch space. Part of me could hear that voice threading through the white noise. Mummy. I haven't stepped on a ship since. I took work, planet sight, and I don't intend to leave it anytime soon. I keep an ear out, though, for tales of missing explorers and vanished traders. Seems to me that they are getting more frequent these days. <laughs>